Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we'll be looking at and reflecting on some of the psalms from the Bible, which were written as songs and can still be sung, but can also still be used as prayers. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the Dewey Rames Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're given in the Douay Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 16 in the Douay Rheims Bible, but Psalm 17 in the RSV. The Prayer of David. Brief Description. Hear, O Lord, my justice, attend my supplication. Give ear unto my prayer, which proceedeth not from deceitful lips. This prayer pleads with the Lord to listen, promising that it's meant sincerely instead of being a lie. Let my judgment come forth from thy countenance. Let thy eyes behold the things that are equitable. My judgment in this case means justice for me, so that the things that are real might be good things. In short, David asks God for justice and goodness in reality. Thou hast proved my heart, and visited it by night. Thou hast tried me by fire, and iniquity hath not been found in me. David has been tested, and passed the tests, showing himself virtuous. This was probably written before the death of Uriah. That my mouth may not speak the words of men, for the sake of the words of thy lips, I have kept hard ways. It's not easy to follow the path that God lays out for us. We need to avoid many things that other people do on a regular basis, but God will make this hard path worthwhile. Perfect thou my goings in thy paths, that my footsteps be not moved. David requests that God will improve his ability to follow his divine will. I have cried to thee, for thou, O God, hast heard me. O incline thy ear unto me, and hear my words. David trusts that God will hear him when he calls out, because he's done so in the past. Shew forth thy wonderful mercies, thou who savest them that trust in thee. From them that resist thy right hand keep me, as the apple of thy eye. Protect me under the shadow of thy wings, from the face of the wicked who have afflicted me. In his mercy, God can protect good men from evildoers, and David requests this special grace here. My enemies have surrounded my soul. They have shut up their fat. Their mouth hath spoken proudly. The word fat here refers to the guts, and as we covered in episode 378, the ancient Hebrews used the guts to refer to the place where the emotions were. So the phrase, shut up their fat, means that they've closed off their emotions. This probably refers to the ability to care for others, given the context in which it's used. They have cast me forth, and now they have surrounded me. They have set their eyes, bowing down to the earth. They have taken me, as a lion prepared for the prey, as a young lion dwelling in secret places. Evildoers did their best to victimize King David like vicious predators. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him and supplant him. Deliver my soul from the wicked one, thy sword from the enemies of thy hand. Remove the power of my enemies, and save me from them. O Lord, deliver them from the few of the earth in their life. Them refers to David's enemies, and few of the earth means the few good things that earth has by comparison to what God is able to offer. The division that David refers to may be a means of protecting the good things from being destroyed by his enemies, or it may be a request to separate his enemies from some of the blessings that God has given them. Their belly is filled from my hidden stores. Even David's enemies ultimately need God for their own survival. They are full of children, and they have left to their little ones the rest of their substance. The enemies of David put too much stock in worldly things, since their substance should be bigger and longer lasting than just material possessions which can be passed on to children. But as for me, I will appear before thy sight in justice. I shall be satisfied when thy glory shall appear. David, however, looks to higher rewards than mere material wealth, the miraculous protection and salvation that God alone can offer. While this psalm implies that David is still under attack by enemies and is still seeking deliverance from them from God, there is definitely a strong element of hope and even praise in this one. Even his perspective on his enemies seems to be laced with pity for them because of their narrow understanding of life and value and their unwillingness to embrace the will of God or share in his victories. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.